Hello everyone. This webinar is presented by Warren Academic Advising. My name is Brittany and I'm an academic counselor. I'm here with Jessalon and Carrie who are also academic counselors and will be assisting with the questions at the very end. Today we will walk through the process of enrolling in your first quarter at UC San Diego. We have one hour for this session. We will be monitoring questions throughout the webinar, so feel free to submit them as we go and we'll answer your questions at the very end. Please do not submit non-enrollment questions or questions that are specific to your individual record. Remember that you will not need to take notes on the information provided in this webinar. It is being recorded and you may refer to it later after the webinar is completed. Let's get started. We hope that you've had a chance to review our enrollment information and the emails that we've been sending you throughout the summer. Here are some items to keep in mind. You can find this timeline online and we'll be getting reminder emails from our office. We'll be going over these in detail in the following slides. On Monday, August 6, you can view your appointment time on WebBridge. On Friday, August 17, we will recommend courses for you to enroll in for your first quarter. You will review them through the new student site on this date. Monday, August 20th, the Enrollment Virtual Advising Center, or EVAC, will be open. You can access this through the new student site and the Ask a Question tab. From Wednesday, August 29th through Friday, August 31st, during your assigned enrollment time, you'll be able to enroll on either the 29th, the 30th, or the 31st. You will be able to continue your enrollment and make any necessary modifications until Monday, September 3rd. On Tuesday, September 4th, WebBridge will close and you will not be able to make any changes. However, on Wednesday, September 5th, enrollment will be open to all students. Your last day to add a class for fall quarter will be Friday of week two. Be aware that UCSD is on a quarter system and not a semester system. There are three quarters in an academic year. You will attend fall, winter, and spring quarters. Summer session is an optional quarter. A quarter is 10 weeks in length, and your final exams will occur week 11. You can expect to have midterms as early as week three and as late as week eight. You will have lecture and discussion sections for many of your courses. On WebReg and the schedule of classes, you will see under meeting type that LE stands for lecture and DI stands for discussion. When you enroll in a course with a discussion section, you are committing to both the lecture and the discussion for the entire quarter. The lecture is often a large group of 100 to 300 students. You are required to attend lectures, although roll call may not be strictly enforced. Lecture is typically more than once a week. The majority of courses will have a lecture and a discussion section. However, not all courses will have a discussion section. Discussion sections are typically only once a week, and when you enroll, you will have a variety of different discussion sections to choose from that fit your individual schedule. The discussion section is a smaller group of students, 40 or less, and is usually taught by a graduate assistant or a graduate student. This is the interactive part of the course where assignments are given and collected, questions are answered, and lecture material is reviewed and discussed in more detail. You can also review your final exam schedule on Triton Link, which will be separate from your discussion and lecture times. So for your first quarter, we do recommend that you take three or four classes, which will be about 12 to 16 units. 12 units is what is considered full-time. Most of your courses at UCSD will be four quarter units. We also recommend that you take lower division courses for fall quarter. These are courses numbered one to 99. An example schedule may consist of the following classes. The first class would be an academic writing course, which is either the WCWP 10A, which is the Warren College Writing Program, or AWP 1 or 2A, which is the analytical writing placement. Your second class would be a lower division major course. Your third class, you may consider taking a GE course. And your fourth class, may you may consider another GE course or a lower division major course. That was a pretty general example, so we'll go over into more specifics later in the webinar. Step one will be to review your appointment time on August 6th. So to access your appointment time, you will need to log into your Triton Link account. 
You'll go to students.ucsd.edu and then you'll click on My Triton link. Then you'll click on the Classes and Enrollment tab. And lastly, you'll click on WebRedge. Once you are logged into WebRedge, click on Appointment Time at the top of the web page and a smaller window as shown will pop up. Keep in mind that appointment times are generated randomly for incoming students. You will be given one pass, which will begin on either Wednesday, August 29th, Thursday, August 30th, or Friday, August 31st. This is considered your start time. You can enroll on or anytime after your appointment time. During this appointment time, you can enroll in and or wait list in up to 19.5 units. This is about four classes. Again, there will be no enrollment on Tuesday, September 4th. However, WebRedge will then reopen for all students on Wednesday, September 5th. Once you view your appointment time and your enrollment time, here's how to prepare for your actual enrollment. Here are some steps to follow that we recommend you do after this webinar comes to a completion. So your second step will be to review the WebRedge tutorial. This is where you can learn step-by-step -step details on how to search for, plan, and enroll in your courses and additional information that we will not be able to cover in this webinar. The third step would be to view various planning resources that are found online. For instance, you can access the schedule of classes. This is where you can search for course offerings for fall quarter, see the grade distribution for specific classes, and then also see instructor evaluations. Another resource is the general catalog. You can use this tool to look for major specific requirements and course descriptions. Academic plans. This is where you can see a four-year plan for your declared or your proposed major. All of these are hyperlinked on this page so you can access these resources at a later time. On August 17th, you'll be able to view the courses that Warren Advising has recommended for you to take during your first quarter. Let's take a look at a more specific example. This is an example schedule of a course recommendation for a student majoring in Management Science, or Econ. Your course recommendations will be based on the information that you entered on the new student site under academic background, your declared or your proposed major, your official academic background that may include your AP, IB, or A-level exams that you submitted to the UCSD Office of Admissions. It will also be based off of your analytical writing placement exam results, if applicable, and any math, chemistry, or foreign language exams results, if applicable. So on the left side here, you will see specific courses listed, and on the right are comments regarding that recommendation. So for this example, for the student that's majoring in management science, we recommended this student to take WCWP 10A or another GE course of their choosing. Their second class we recommended was Math 20C. The student major requires the Math 20 series, and with their AP exam scores, they were eligible to enroll in Math 20C. The third course is a PFC course. So this is another GE course that is suggested. Information on selecting PFCs or area studies can be found directly on our website. And their fourth class was Econ 1, which was required for the student's major. It is very important that you read the comments next to each of your courses as it is specific to your own academic record. Once you review your course recommendations, you can begin planning out your schedule. From August 6th through your assigned appointment time, you can access WebRedge and create what is called My Schedule. Under Course Enrollment, you can search for classes by typing in the department and the course number if needed. For example, you can search Math and various math courses will be listed. You will then be able to select the Plan button under Action, and this will be entered in your personal schedule. The Enroll button will not be active until your enrollment time actually begins. Also take note of the lecture and discussion times, the number of seats available, and if there is a wait list. Once you plan a course, it will then ask you to select a grading option. Select Letter or Pass Not Pass. Most major courses will need to be taken for a letter grade, so check with your department if you have specific questions. You will have until Friday, 
of week four to go back onto WebReg and change your grading options. For my schedule, you can view the courses you have selected as a list or calendar. For the planning feature, you are able to plan courses that overlap with each other or that have wait list. However, you should ensure that you resolve any scheduling conflicts before your actual enrollment time. And remember to have backup options. For more information on how to plan your schedule, remember to review the WebReg tutorial. So step six would be to enroll. When your enrollment time is active, you'll be able to enroll and waitlist in up to 19.5 units. Beginning on the first day of the quarter, this limit actually goes up to 22 units. You can go back onto your plan schedule from either the list or the calendar view, and you will be able to click on Enroll and select your grading option. Once you select your grading option, remember to select Confirm, or you will not be enrolled in that course. Once you are enrolled, your courses will turn blue on the list or the calendar view, and if you're waitlisted, those courses will appear in light blue. Waitlist tips. So now we're going to talk more about this topic of waitlist. Many of you will experience being on a waitlist for a major or GE course. Your goal will be to be enrolled in a full-time workload, which is 12 units, by Friday of week two. It is okay to waitlist in courses, but ensure that you have other options in mind. Here are some tips that you should consider and be aware of. Number one, you can only waitlist for one discussion section of a course. If there's another open section for the same course, we would recommend that you enroll in an open section rather than waitlist. Tip number two, do not waitlist for WCWP 10A. There is very little movement in Warren Writing College Program 10A and we recommend that you wait to take the course during winter quarter if you are unable to get into an open section for this fall. Tip number three, consider whether or not to remain on the wait list. So think about if you can take this course during a later quarter or if you can take an open course that will still satisfy the same requirement. Tip number four, during the first week of classes, You'll want to monitor your waitlisted courses and have backup options. Consider taking GE courses that are more flexible with your schedule. Tip number five. When the quarter begins, attend both waitlisted and backup courses. You'll want to get the course syllabus for each class, and you will not want to fall behind in your coursework even if you are still waitlisted. This is also very important. Remember to monitor your UCSD email. You will receive a notification if your position on the waitlist changes or if you've actually been added to the course. Also take note that the automatic waitlist ends on Thursday of week two. So this means that if you do not get off the waitlist by midnight on this day, then you will not be enrolled in that course. The last day to add an open course for the quarter is Friday of week two. Thank you for watching the webinar. So at this time, we will begin our question and answer portion. So if you have additional questions, feel free to submit them at this time and our counselors will be able to answer them. Remember to only ask general questions that are not specific to your academic background. You will be able to submit specific questions on the new student site starting August 20th. If we do run out of time during the Q&A, we will take your questions and we will answer those that are related to enrollment. The recorded webinar and questions will be available to you sometime next week. So one of the questions that was asked is, is enrollment for us first come first serve? So for your very first enrollment time here at UCSD that you will have in August, it's not based off of first come first serve. So you will be given a randomly generated appointment time and it's not based off of the number of units that you have received but all of your future enrollment times, they're going to be based off of how many units you have. So that could include AP, IB, other transfer coursework that you may have on your record. So seniors will enroll first, followed by juniors, sophomores, and then freshmen. So another question was, there's already a waitlist for some classes. 
Do I plan on not getting them? So to answer that question, some of the classes right now, if you look at the schedule of classes, it will say that there is a wait list. However, some departments will be opening seats closer to your enrollment time. So some departments have saved seats for incoming students. So you'll just want to monitor that list and the schedule of classes and on WebReg to see if there's going to be any modifications, but they will release some seats. Another one of the questions, uh, a student wanted us to suggest the amount of classes and units to take. Typically freshmen uh, begin their first quarter with anywhere from 12 to 16 units, which would be three to four classes. Uh, it just depends, um, coming from high school to the university is a big transition, and it's on a quarter system here, which is very fast, so oftentimes it's best to take between three and four just to get acclimated to the university and the uh, class that you're taking, and then decide the next quarter whether you want to take more than that. So then another question we have is, is there going to be a list of recommended classes with comments every quarter or only during our first quarter? Um, and the answer for that one is we only do the formalized course recommendations for you um, for the fall quarter of the, um, your first fall quarter. Um, but you are welcome to come in and see us during walk-in advising or submit questions to us in the virtual advising center about classes you um, are thinking about taking as well as talking to your major advisors. Um, so now we'll get into some questions about general education requirements. Um, so we've received a few questions about programs of concentration and area studies. Uh, one question is, can I start on my program of concentration courses whenever I want? And the answer to that one is yes. Um, so the programs of concentration are something that we call a general education requirement. So in your course recommendations, we might suggest to you to take a general education course. Um, and one of those could be a program of concentration course. Another question we have um, is, if we do not know what PFCs to take, what should we do? So for those courses, so on the webpage that we're showing you right now, that is the warren.ucsd.edu. Um, it'll show you the programs of concentrations on there. So what you can do is you can go under academics and then go to general education requirements and then choose choosing programs of concentration. So on that list here, you'll be able to see a chart. So for instance, I am a sociology major. I'm going to see which discipline that falls under. So I found my major that is under social science. So now I know that the programs of concentration that I will choose are outside of the social science discipline. So for one, I would have to do one program of concentration in humanities and fine arts, and one in natural science, math, and engineering. So each program of concentration is six classes. Three of them will be upper division. We are going to go over this more in detail during September orientation and we can answer specific questions about your PFCs at that time. But for instance, if I am a sociology major, I may choose to do visual arts, and I may choose to do biology. For my visual arts PFC, I would have to do three lower and three upper division visual arts classes. For my biology, I would have to do three lower and three upper division biology courses. And many of you will have already fulfilled lower division program of concentration requirements with your various AP units. So when we when you view your course recommendations, uh, be sure to look at the AP chart to determine what, if any, of your APs or um, prior junior college, for instance, courses you've taken would satisfy lower division requirements. So some of you might uh, not need to take any or maybe just need to start on one of the other programs of concentration if you've already satisfied the lower division of, for instance, the humanities if you're a soci sociology major. 
For programs of concentration, also take note that these are for all majors except BS engineering majors. If you are a BS engineering major and are declared in that major, then you would look at choosing area studies. The only difference between PFCs and area studies are that for area studies, if you are a BS engineering major, you would choose one area study in humanities and fine arts and then one in social science. Instead of having a total of six classes, each area study consists of three classes, two of which are upper division. So for instance, I am a computer science BS major, declared in that major. I may choose to do music as one of my area studies, and then I may choose to do economics as another area study. For my music area study, I would take one lower and two upper division music courses, and for my economics area study, I would take one lower and two upper division economics courses. Uh, one of the questions was about letter grades, um, and perhaps some of you are familiar with the letter grade versus pass no pass grading system. Be sure that when you're enrolling in courses, you note whether the course is required on a letter grade basis or if you're able to take it pass no pass. So for Warren writing, for example, we indicate that you need to take it for a letter grade. Uh, some of your GEs in the programs of concentration or the area studies, those perhaps can be taken on a pass no pass basis. Uh, another question was, is there going to be a list of recommended classes with comments every quarter or only for our first quarter? So you'll be getting uh, our list of recommended classes this, this first quarter only. Uh, starting winter quarter and after that, we will um, be open to students to come in to see us on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, appointment basis, walk-in. We also hold pre-enrollment in residence halls. Uh, so there's various ways that you'll meet with us should you need to meet with a counselor before you enroll. You'll also meet with your departmental advisor who will guide you with your major courses. Another question is, is TriNLink the same account as Tri and Checklist? So the answer is no. So Try and Checklist will disappear after you are completely enrolled in courses. So the Try and Checklist has to do with your admissions to UCSD and provided you with information prior to your enrollment here. So your Try and Link account will be your main portal that you're going to be using throughout your time here at UCSD. And that's where you're going to be able to see all of your information um, and your personal accounts, um, your financial accounts, as well as some of the information you need on your academics. There was a question also about the 19.5 uh, max units for enrollment. So when you begin enrolling, you will be capped at 19.5. Um, students who want to take more than that, which we don't typically recommend as a first quarter freshman, you would have to wait till the first day of class to enroll in up to 22. And anything over that, obviously, you'd need permission um, from the department and college. Uh, to tie into that, there was another question that was addressing high achieving freshmen wanting to take, you know, many classes. Maybe in high school you were able to handle, you know, a very full load with APs and so on. But I would caution you when you come here, just your first quarter at least, to um, take it easy on your course load just to get acclimated to one, you know, being away from home and, and being at UCSD, completely different environment, very fast paced. Um, so I would recommend again um, between 12 and 16 units or three to four classes. So there's a few questions on letter grading options versus pass no pass. So the main difference there is that you would definitely want to check with your major specific courses versus your general education requirements. So in general, a letter grade, you'll receive a letter grade for the course, so an A to an F letter grade. For pass, no pass, as long as you get a C minus or better, you receive a pass. So the pass, no pass will not impact your overall or your term GPA. However, so if you take a class for a letter grade, it will be used to calculate your cumulative GPA. 
most major courses will require you to take their classes for a C- minus or better for a letter grade. For your general education requirements, for instance, for your programs of concentrations or for your area studies, you will need to take those for either a letter grade or you have the option to take them for pass, no pass. For the Warren Writing College program, 10A and 10B, so WCWP 10A, 10B, and then also for Ethics and Society, which we did not talk about today, but is also required for you as a Warren College student, those courses will be need to be taken for a letter grade. Uh, I'm reading a question that says, are we required to take a math class that we've placed in during our placement tests, or are we allowed to take a different math class? So some of you will have taken AP, some of you will have taken the placement test. Um, when you look at our course recommendations, we will base our recommendation on whatever information um, we have. So if you have AP, depending if you took the AB or BC and your score, we'll tell you what to take. Also, depending on your major and what they dictate to take, we will list the correct math class to take if you've taken IB. So all of these things factor into which math course you will take. If you did take the placement test and it tells you and it, we tell you what course you need to enroll in, you must enroll in that particular class. So you can't take a higher level course than the placement test has indicated. So this is a question about waitlist. So if you get enrolled into a waitlist class, do you just request to drop out of your backup class? So for this, um, what we did go over during the webinar is that if you are waitlisted for a course or courses, um, your main goal will be to have 12 units. So at minimum, 12 units or about three classes for your first quarter. So if you are in a waitlisted class, say that's your fourth option, and you end up wanting to get into that class, you have other options in mind, um, you can kind of make that decision. And you can also talk to your academic counselors at your major department and then also with us during the first few weeks of classes. And we can talk to you specifically about which classes you're considering. Um, but as long as you have three or four classes that you're enrolled in officially that are related to either your GE, your major, or a potential exploratory course, either if you're looking to change your major or you may want to minor in something, then you would have a good schedule for your first quarter. I see a question about uh, whether you get a counselor to talk about courses and planning. And uh, the way that we uh, handle pre-enrollment and when you're actually enrolling is we open up what we call e-advising um, during specific dates um, that's on the timeline on our website. And at that uh, point in time, you can send us as many questions as you want and we will reply every day to those questions. So it's you know very similar to speaking one-on-one -on -one with the counselor, but instead we're doing it virtually. So um, please feel that you can ask as many questions as you need to during that time. Another question is, is it normal that I do not have an appointment time? So right now you will not be able to view your appointment time. So that actually happens on Monday, August 6th. So you won't be able to go onto WebBridge right now, and it won't show you a specific enrollment time. So you have to wait until August 6th. Um, another question is, where and when will it be available to see our recommended courses? So for that, um, as was mentioned on the webinar, you'll be able to view that on the new student site. So that will not happen until Friday, August 17th. And this, I don't know if Brittany mentioned, but this whole PowerPoint and everything that we're saying will be posted. So you'll be able to go back and review all this information. Another question um, is, how do you determine general education courses for us? Um, so when we are reviewing um, for course recommendations, we're going to look at everything that you're coming in with in terms of your academic background. So if you're coming in with the various AP scores, IB exam scores, um, A-levels, or any other transfer coursework, we're going to take that into consideration and we will recommend which courses to take. If you're talking about um, general education courses that involve your PFCs or area studies, um, you'll be able to choose those classes um, and they'll be pretty flexible. 
So for instance, if I was a sociology major and I had a program of concentration for visual arts, I could just go to the schedule of classes. I could see which classes are available for fall 2018. All of the visual arts courses that do not have prerequisites or that I'm eligible to take, I'd be able to enroll in as long as it's four units. I would be able to use that to satisfy a GE. Um, so something that was also mentioned um, during the webinar are various resources that you can find online. So this screen here that we are showing you is a schedule of classes. So this is where you're going to be able to search for specific classes. You can change the term, but for now we'll just leave this at fall 2018. Um, and you can search by department, by subject, by code. Um, the easiest thing to do for now is probably just to look by department and by subject. Um, so for now, if I'm a sociology major, I wanted to look at visual arts classes for my PFC. I would select visual arts. I can also fil filter this by lower and upper division. If you're um, for first year students, we typically recommend looking at only the lower division courses, so I'm just going to filter by lower division. So on here, you'll be able to see the visual arts courses that are offered for fall 2018. Um, again, we talked about wait lists, we talked about course availability and having departments open up sections for students that are incoming, and that will not happen until um, the beginning of your enrollment or closer to your enrollment time. So for instance, if I'm a sociology major, I'm interested in taking this class here, which is Visual Arts 20, Introduction to Art History. I would want to look at the prerequisite for the course. So on here you can see that there are no prerequisites for Vis 20 for Fall 18. So that would um, indicate to me that I'm eligible to take this course, and I can see the different sections that are available. So on the top here, you'll be able to see LE stands for lecture, as we mentioned. So that's a mandatory lecture where you will have to go. Um, for all of the other ones that are listed below here, those are your discussion sections. So you have a variety of sections to choose from. You're not going to be going to every single discussion section that is listed for this course. You're only going to attend one. I'm seeing one of the GE-related questions, um, again, about AP credit and uh, you were asking uh, if we don't get your APs by July 15th, will you not be able to use them before enrollment? So when you input your uh, background, academic background, you indicated to us if you um, had taken or were taking um, or currently enrolled in a course or AP. And so we use that information. We don't actually have to have it official to give you advice on what course you should be taking. So hopefully you put that information on there and if you omitted it by some reason, be sure to always um, look at the AP chart or any um, like assist.org for a course you took at the community college so that you determine which course you are exempt from based on the course that you've already taken or the AP you've already taken if you receive a score of three or higher. Uh, oh, I wanted to mention about, because Brittany was talking about the um, PFCs and area studies, and uh, a student asked about minors. Many of our students do minors in lieu of their programs of concentration or area studies. So if you are thinking about that, uh, that's fine to do as long, and you can use that minor if it's, um, for instance, history, and you wanted to change it into a minor, the difference is the number of courses. So minors consist of seven courses with at least five upper division. Um, and the nice thing about minors in some cases is that you can overlap up to two of the upper division minor courses with a major if applicable. So when you're thinking about uh, your programs of concentration or area studies, and I know business um, was mentioned in several questions, um, students do do the business minor, um, and please look at our website so that you become familiar with how um, the minors are used in lieu of programs of concentration. So now we're going to look at some major related questions. Um, so some of the questions um, you may be asking are based off of how do you choose major specific courses for your first quarter. Um, so since we are your general education counselors or advisors, um, we cannot specifically tell you which courses that you should be taking for your major. 
However, we can still recommend um, courses based off of what they've put on this resource here. So the screen that we are showing you is called Academic Plan. So if you go to plans.ucsd.edu, that's the website that you will go to to look at your four-year plan. Mm -hmm. So you'll be selecting the college. It'll ask you which college you'll enter, Earl Warren, and then you're entering year 2018. And then you'll look at your department. So for instance, I will choose biology. So for biology, you'll be able to click on your specific major under that department. So let's click on human biology. On here, you'll be able to see your four-year plan. So for your first quarter, you can look at these as well. So these courses are were, were what is recommended from your major advisors and also your college advisors. So that would be us. So you can take a look at these courses specifically. And this actually gives you a four-year template or a plan that you can modify on your own. So many of you will be coming in with AP or IB course credit. Um, so some of these courses you will be able to adjust on your plan. And the courses under GE, so these are specific to a student that does not come in with any um, particular credit towards a GE requirement. So this student does not have any AP or IB score, so each this student would need to take exactly what is on this plan. Um, however, if you have some AP credit, you may be able to delete some of these GE requirements on here since you have already satisfied them. Um, also something to look at on this plan is that there's no summer session. So summer session is our optional quarter that you can take at UCSD. Many students will do that so then they can either get ahead or catch up on some courses um, or to alleviate some of the courses they would take during the academic year. And if we scroll down on this page all the way to the bottom, you can see the comments from your major because I'm seeing some questions about, um, you know, who is our major advisor how, and how would we get in touch with them, etc. So uh, the major departments um, all have a, a series of um, instructions at the bottom of the four-year plans with many links and typically they're to their website. So I would encourage you to go to their website and on there the staff counselors within the major will be there and you can find out how to contact them. Some of them will have their own uh, small orientation that you will need to attend. Uh, so um, their counseling hours will be there. And so for all the majors, certainly go and review that information. Another question is, when can I change my major? How do we let our academic advisors know that we are planning on switching majors? So in general, to change your major to an uncapped major, you can do that as soon as you're enrolled in classes. So for instance, say I am a sociology major, but I want to change my major to history. I'm easily able to do that on what is called the major minor tool. and I would be able to do that as soon as I'm enrolled in fall classes. Um, in general, you don't have to let your academic advisors know if you are switching your major. Um, however, if you're an international student with an F1 visa, um, you can talk to that department specifically. So they're the International Students and Programs Office about specific major changes. Another question that I'm seeing under the major, is it required for you to enroll in courses based on the major you have right now? Um, we recommended the courses that you listed on your um, academic background sheet. So some of you had a major that you already declared. Some of you had a prospective major that you, and we based the courses on that, whether even if it was a capped major, we still did that. And if you're undeclared and another student was asking, but they know what they want to, to major in, you can certainly uh, take courses in the major that you know you want to major in. So even though you listed undeclared uh, and we advised you based on that, we typically advise undeclared students to take um, exploratory courses to determine what um, they like or dislike. So if you know you want to be a poli-sci major or um, you know one of the other majors, certainly go ahead and take uh, what it dictates on the four-year plan for that particular major and then stick to the GEs um, 
the only difference would be in planning your programs of concentration if your major is in a different column than a major, for instance, you told us you wanted to be, uh, that would change your program of concentration. And you'll need to look at the page that Brittany mentioned about programs of concentration in area studies because it can get confusing if you're not looking at that to determine how we separate uh, our GEs. So please refer to that chart every time you have a question about whether something is contiguous or non-contiguous to your major. Also adding on that, so if you are unsure about what major to choose, um, you can have those discussions with both us during walk-in advising or during appointments during fall quarter, um, but you can also go talk to other departments. So even if you're not specifically declared in that department uh, and you're still considering majors within their department, then you can still meet with advisors there. So all major advisors or all department advisors will also have walk-in and appointments, and you can also schedule appointments with them. Another question, are there spots reserved in major courses for incoming students? And I think Brittany alluded to this. Um, presently, you may see that something is closed, um, but there are majors that do open courses for new students when uh, you enroll. So please be um, watching that when your enrollment time comes and seats will open up in certain courses. Sometimes some uh, departments will advise you to waitlist a course so they can get an idea of how many people actually need the course and sometimes they're able to open sections based on this too. So that information will be on the department website as well. So make sure you also visit the website of the department. Uh, if I'm taking a course at a community college this summer, do I need to add it as a transfer course? So hopefully you told us that you were taking the course and what the course is on your academic background so we can include it when we're advising you on which courses to take. If you, for some reason, omitted it, just be sure that you don't duplicate credit um, of a course that you've already taken. And remember, the assist.org website gives you all the approximations of the courses at the community college versus here. And if it happens to be a four-year institution that you took the course, um, you can ask us um, during the e-advising about the course if you wish, but just be sure not to duplicate any duplicate any credit. So we have about 15 minutes left um, for the Q&A portion of this webinar. Um, we do have a variety of questions that are left, so we are going to try to get through as many as possible. Um, but if they are not related to enrollment, then we will not be answering them during this webinar. Um, another question that was asked is, if the system shows um, you received transcripts from other colleges, but the courses do not appear on my degree plan with my AP credits. Should I be concerned or is it still under review? So for that, um, yes, so it is still being under review by the UCSD Office of Admissions. So everything on your record will not be officially posted until mid to late August. So at that point, mid-August, um, we'll be able to see everything. Um, things are being posted now, but everything is not 100% accurate. Um, or the admissions office may still be posting some of your AP scores or transfer coursework. Um, so August 17th, that's when you're going to review your course recommendations. And by that point, hopefully everything is on there. But if things come in after that, you can always start asking us questions on EVAC um, on August 20th. And that's when we're going to be able to either modify things that were sent to you on your course recommendations or to provide you with any other clarification. Um, another question was, should I follow my four-year plan or my course recommendations for first quarter if they are different? Uh, so the reason that they would be different is because you would have already satisfied some of the courses that are in the first quarter and even second quarter. So we would have advised you to take courses that are beyond that, and so they wouldn't match. If you feel that... Um, the course we advise you on you haven't taken yet or 
for some reason is incorrect, please let us know through e-advising and we can talk about it further. But typically that's where uh, the difference would be in that you, you've already fulfilled the requirement for the first quarter or second quarter. So that's why they'd be different. So another question was, where can we find a description of all the different courses available to choose from? So that's a very good question. Um, so as mentioned on during the webinar, um, a thing that you can look at is called the general catalog. So if you go to ucsd.edu forward slash catalog, you'll be able to see this page. So under courses, you'll be able to select a specific department and look at all of their courses that they offer and the course description. So for instance, under economics, I'll go ahead and click on courses. And then you'll be able to see all of the upper division, lower division courses, and their prerequisites for those courses. So not all of these courses will be offered for this specific fall quarter. However, you can look at the courses that are offered. So this could be based off of your major. You could look at specific courses that you might just want to explore for fall quarter if you're still considering majors, or you can look up descriptions for your general education requirements. And many of the department websites list the year so many already have the um, fall 18 through um, spring 2019. Uh, so I'd encourage you to go and look and it, it divides them between fall, winter, and spring quarters. So you'll know which courses are being offered in which quarters. So another question is about lower division courses and upper division courses. So we do recommend that for first year students, you do take lower division courses. So those are courses that are numbered one to 99. So for instance, here for Econ, they don't have too many lower division courses that they offer for their department. However, you can see that these are the lower division courses that they have. Um, lower division courses are different from upper division courses because they usually require less prerequisites or do not have any prerequisites. So these are often introductory courses or lower division courses that a student needs to progress into some upper division courses that they need for their major um, or for additional courses. Um, for upper division, it's 100 to 199, and as you can see for econ, some of their upper division courses require specific approvals or additional prerequisites. Another question is, uh, would we have to enroll in at least 12 units regardless of AP credits we got from high school? Um, if you want to be a full-time student, you need to enroll in a minimum of 12 units. So um, that would be a minimum of three classes, regardless of AP that you have. Um, in terms of students that are on financial aid, you can check with financial aid in terms of how they calculate um, the rules for financial aid. But um, yes, you still need to enroll in three, four-unit courses to be considered full-time. Uh, another student asked if they failed the AWPE test, which is the English test, how would they know which AWP class, which AWP class they would take when enrollment time comes? And we have told you um, when you go in to see your course recommendations, we will tell you the exact writing course that you're eligible to enroll in. So if you did not pass the exam, we would tell you which AWP course to enroll. Um, so that will be accurate on your um, course recommendations. Uh, another question I just wanted to mention, because I know I get a lot of students asking this, about the Chem 6A and the 6A honors. Uh, many times, based on um, whether you took the Chem placement test, your AP score, if you took that, um, the course recommendations will say either 6A or 6A honors. And it really is up to you to decide um, which you want to take. I looked at the CHEM uh, website, and they do um, explain the difference between chemistry 6A and 6A honors. And also in the general catalog where uh, Brittany was showing you before, you can also read about the difference. Um, obviously, honors is going to be um, a bit more challenging, but for some students, um, with a lot of chemistry background, that may be a better placement for them. And then if for some reason you didn't want to continue in the honor series, but you wanted to continue in the chemistry, you can you don't have to take the whole honor series for the year. So you can go down to, for instance, Chem 6B versus Chem 6BH. 
you also have the first two weeks of the quarter to um, change your courses. So it could be if the first couple days you're in the honors and you feel it's just um, too much, you can go down to Chem 6A. Another question was, how can we find out what classes our AP or IB score satisfy? So that's a very good question. Um, so under the Academics tab on the Warren College website, you can go under Academic Resources. You can see the AP and IB credit chart. So you want to go through this chart and look up the APs that you've taken and what your score was. And it tells you exactly what you would be exempt from and what you should enroll in. We have looked at this, um, obviously, before we did your course recommendations. Uh, so it should mirror this information. So going off of uh, PFCs or programs of concentration and area studies, so a lot of you are asking when do you declare them so, or how do you declare them. So you will declare them either on the Virtual Advising Center when you have access to that um, or through the E-Virtual Advising Center um, starting on August 20th. Um, or you can do it during walk-in or during an appointment with an academic counselor for Warren College. Um, there's not a specific deadline that you need to declare them. Um, Any time is great before you graduate. It'll show you, once we declare them, which courses you still need and which ones you have satisfied. Um, there's some questions about the first year experience course or the FYE course. Uh, yes, I would encourage students to take that course. Uh, it's um, Many universities have this course as mandated, but we, although we don't mandate that you take it, it's a wonderful class to get you acclimated to the university. Uh, so I would encourage you to add that to your schedule if, if you're able to fit it in. How do elective credits work, a student asked. Um, on many of the four-year four, four year plans, uh, we will have what it's, it just says elective uh, and that generally refers to a course that a student would need in order to reach the 180 minimum unit requirement for graduation at UCSD. This varies from student to student, so it's very difficult to address individually or in for, as a whole. But when you come see us uh, in the fall, we can explain your particular situation with regards to electives. But your first quarter, if you are looking for a course and for instance, um, you have an open spot and you need to fill up your schedule, uh, many students do take an elective course, which would simply be a course that you want to take. Perhaps you want to explore a certain subject and it doesn't have any prereqs uh, or you have fulfilled the prereqs, you are certainly welcome to enroll in what we call an elective. Uh, can you take upper division for your major during the first year? Um, that would be between you and your major department. Typically, students do not take upper division uh, unless they've satisfied um, the lower division. And I know I recommended for students that had completed, for instance, lower division series of specific majors that they contact the department to determine whether they should go on to the upper division. Another question is, are there any requirements we need to meet by the end of our first year? So in terms of your general education requirements, um, we recommend that if you can to complete Warren Writing, um, the sequence 10A and 10B, so WC, WP, 10A and 10B by the end of your first year. However, we understand that sometimes students cannot get into those courses, so we recommend trying to get those courses done within your first or your second year because you'll need to progress into the ethics and society requirements, which are listed on our main website here under general education requirements for ethics and society. So you need to satisfy Warren writing before you can enroll in ethics and society, and we do not want students waiting until their senior year to take these courses. Um, other than that, you can also consult with your major specific department if there are any courses that they do recommend um, for you to take during your first year, uh, but they should list that on their department website as well. There's a question about the EASY system, which is the pre-authorization pre system that UCSD uses. Um, I would encourage you to read about that online, uh, each department. Um, has 
specific instructions as to what you need to petition or get pre-authorized for. Uh, so um, if that department needs pre-authorization, you would go in uh, to what we call the easy system and enter your information. It then uh, goes virtually to the department and sometimes the college where you will be pre-authorized for a course and then you're able to enroll in it. Okay, so we did go over a variety of different topics today for our Q&A. If you do have uh, more questions in the future, then you'll be able to start asking us online questions again on Monday, August 20th. So for that there, you'll be able to submit us enrollment questions, so any additional questions that you may have regarding your record. Um, other than that, this webinar will be also posted on our main website under our orientation section. So if you go to orientation and go to first year students, and then click on first year enrollment, it will be posted here. Um, you'll also be able to see a lot of the resources that we mentioned today under academic resources, under preparing for your first quarter enrollment. Um, so you'll have all the information on there. Um, so that's all the time that we have today. Remember that we will be sending you out this recorded version of the webinar sometime next week, and we will see you all during September orientation. Thanks for watching.